No, 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 no. <laughs> they sound fuzzy. All right, I'll take Venmo. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. It's all going a bit wrong. Hey everyone, it's Carl with headphones.com and today I have, well, a very special video. So some of you may remember that just a few weeks ago, I actually had my friends sit down in my office and try out a bunch of different headphones ranging from, you know, as affordable as $40 to as prohibitively expensive as $6,000. I have a bit of follow-up video to that one as today I'll actually have my friends try out IEMs and see if they can tell which ones are the affordable versus the expensive ones. Just as in the last test, I wanted to emphasize that this is not supposed to be a scientific test. You know, we have a very small sample size and there are a lot of things that we didn't really control for. There was one factor I did control for and it's that I asked my friends to only use basic rubber tips for the listening. Uh, so no tip rolling or using like phone tips. And obviously I know that this isn't really the most like realistic scenario as I do think that IEM as users would do some tip rolling and experimenting as of course the fit of the IEMs would greatly affect their listening experience, the frequency response and their comfort. Now, one last thing I wanted to mention was that for the listening test, my friends streamed all of their music through Kobus at the highest possible quality setting available for each of the different tracks and that all the IEMs were powered by the same setup that being the benchmark HPA4 amplifier being fed by the Burson Composer 3x stack. Now with all that out of the way let's get going. Before they started trying out the IEMs I let my friends listen to my AirPods Pro 2s just so they would have a reference for you know what everyday commonplace like in-ear headphones sound like. We're back for round two. I'm back. Do you think that these will sound better? Than the headphones you tried last time? Oh, hell no. Uh, maybe. I think it would be exceedingly difficult for for them to be better. I brought a pair because I got them like a month ago because I just started gigging with some uh, some venues that have live audio. What do you think of those compared to the AirPods then? Blows them away. You know, I think it's because it's an actual like decent amp. <laughs> I didn't think in-ears would actually sound this good. Get ready for what, you, what you're about to listen the to. The Grand Awakening. <laughs> yeah. Is this the right ear? <laughs> I don't know how these work. Uh, that is not how you put them on. How do you put them on? And I'm actually gonna just put them behind, like I normally do. Think how they're supposed to go. <laughs> They're definitely flatter than mine. I think mine have like an artificial uh, boost on the mids. They just sound a lot more balanced overall. Felt more immersive. I feel like I used that word last time I did these videos too. I have a limited vocabulary. I think these sounded super, uh, yeah, they sounded super. But in terms of comfort, I'm not a fan of these completely. They're just a little big. I think if I got smaller ear tips, they'd fit better. Again, I, I don't know if this is the correct word to describe, but it felt less compressed than than the audio through the AirPods. Do you think they sound cleaner or more detailed or is it just like a tuning thing? I think the, I mean, at least from what I could hear, it, it's probably a bit of a jump in sound quality and then most of the rest is just tuning. So how much do you think those were? 300? I don't know, no, that's so probably, bad, that's so wrong. Probably around $250. Easily 300 bucks just off the bat. Oh, I like these, yeah. I think if I got the ear tips, like, you know, worked out, these would be, an awesome pair. Who comes up with these names? I'm gonna catch flack for that, aren't I? You know, I never know where to look when I'm listening. <laughs> Everything just sounded, I don't know, flat. I don't know if that's what I'm, the word I'm looking for. There wasn't much, much distinction, I don't think. Like my first, impression was was to be very um, unimpressed. Bass is significantly lower. Like I actually kind of struggled to hear the bass on some of those tunes. The voices and the instruments, they were all kind of just like melding together, which I, I feel like maybe some people like. I like a little more, I like the distinction of the other ones. The clarity in these might be the best that I've tried so far. So you like them more than the previous ones? I don't. Even though I've valued clarity a lot up to this point, I feel like 
listening to music um, through these just lacked um, oomph. I didn't enjoy listening to these as much, actually. And how much do you think these are? These are the Symphonium Audio Meteors. $100. I'm gonna get shit for this. 200? 30 bucks. I think 30 bucks, yeah. Yeah, I, they are very pretty. Either it's like one of those like, you know, they had no other ideas on design and it's like a $10 Chinese knockoff, or this is like a $2,000 hand dipped artisan crafted like case. I like these ones a lot. Watch, I'm gonna get more comments calling me deaf. <laughs> I'm sorry to put a break on your fun, but uh, what do you think of these? I want a Ron offset with these. Don't think anything really stood out. They just sounded solid middle of the road. In terms of clarity, they're right up there. I was hearing parts of like pieces of the music that I didn't notice before. In sound and color, there's like a little chime in the background that I never noticed before. And then uh, take me to church, there's like a voice like humming in the background. And maybe that's because I'm not observant, but <laughs> I noticed it with these. These have the clarity and the oomph, uh, and that goes a long way. You could really feel the music with these. Yeah, you're vibing. Dude, I don't know. Like, now that I have a general reference for like the range of prices this show puts on, it could be <laughs> these could be that one expensive pair. If you had to assign a price tag though. I feel like these are gonna be like 1200 bucks. Mm, about $500. Thousand? Are these just like flexible hooks? Yes, they are. <laughs> this is unbelievable. What's unbelievable? You're the only person who's managed to figure out how to put them on right on the first try. Okay, I, I think I know how to. No, 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 no. <laughs> God. <laughs> hey, let me, no, no, stop, stop, just stop. Mm, I don't like them. They sound fuzzy. I think these are my second favorites. I mean, they sound fairly clear. They're not the clearest. They do everything well, but they don't stand out in any way. I will add, they're very comfortable. They sound a little brittle. The low end bass, it's kind of dry. How much do you think they are? $150. I probably think they actually costed more than what they should have. Um, maybe like $150. These are probably $450, bucks, $300, bucks, something like that. Dude, my ear is gonna get violated by these. My ear canal. Oh yeah, that's in there. <laughs> that is all the way in there. They're fine. I still like the clear ones and the purple kiwi ones. I like those more. The sound quality is definitely above the meteors, but they're tuned similarly. Up there at like, I'm talking like 18K range. They're really sharp up there. These are awesome. I feel like these maybe um, create the best sort of um, sound stage effect. And so that thing I talked about, that exact thing, I was turning up, so for the beginning of stay, I turned up the volume to get that nice like low mid like acoustic guitar. And then as soon as that first snare hit came in, you see me flinch. <laughs> like, dude, that thing woke me up. 300 bucks. All right. 750. $2,000. Could you do me a favor and rank them from least favorite to favorite? These, dead last. I did not like these. Meteor. I didn't like them that much. I mean, they're fine. Tia, she's fine. Um, I like the clear ones, second best. And then I liked Kiwi ears. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot. I'm supposed to hold them like this. <laughs> this one's my favorite. <laughs> least favorite. Oh, already there. Thanks, Sennheisers. Look at those meteors. There was those way high trebles were just absolutely like slammed to the roof. I'd say TIAs were next. 
they were like very solid overall. I'd consider these for uh, live gigging potentially between these two. You know what, I think I'd go with the Kiwis for just listening on my own. Just if I wanna enjoy some music, chill on the couch, I'd go with these. I would say least favorite were um, the Meteors. They're nice, but they feel kind of cheap and they just, they felt weak, like really weak. Very clear, but very weak. Second to last would be the Blessing 2. Really, there's the separator between the Blessing 2 and the Sennheiser um, was honestly just the fact that the Sennheiser were extremely comfortable. The U12Ts, that's a, they sound amazing. They look amazing. The cadenzas had a little more oomph, though I did really like uh, the kind of soundstage effect that these had. Yeah. The IE200, you said it was 150 and it's your least favorite. It is indeed 150. As your second least favorite, you had the Symphonium Audio Meteor. From the name, dude, I'm just... <laughs> is $600. Nah. And then the Cadenza, which are, were your favorites, uh, those are $35. For 35 bucks, I would absolutely grab these. 100%, 35 cannot go wrong. All right, I'll take Venmo. <laughs> or <Okay. laughs> $35. Are you serious? Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. It's all going a bit wrong. Do you think you like the sound of these more than the headphones last time? Yeah. Yeah, I think you so. like these more? I think so, yeah. I think you personally have to spend significantly more on headphones to get similar sound quality. I, I kind of enjoyed um, this video more. Even though I spend a lot of time with over ear headphones, I feel like most of my best uh, music listening sessions when I'm really feeling the music come, you know, when I'm on walks, when I'm doing things like that, where it's a bit more casual, I just pop in some in-ears and- Are you gonna be buying some cadenzas? Yeah, well, you know what? Clearly they're a pretty good deal. Okay, so I have to say, I'm actually quite surprised by the results from this video. I, you know, when we did the over your headphone video, at least when it came to how they would rank the headphones, I found it much easier to predict which headphones would perform better in my friend's rankings, but that wasn't really the case with the IEMs. Something that's really interesting is that even though my friends noticed things like resolution, detail retrieval, and sound stage, really the two qualities that reign supreme in guiding their preference for what their favorite headphones were, they were tonal balance and comfort. And well, as we saw in the video, these were two qualities that, well, they're attainable at really affordable price points. You know, what was most special to me though, was seeing my friend's reaction to listening to these headphones because honestly, I mean, you saw James, he was full on air guitaring and like just completely vibing to BB King. So they were really getting into listening experience in a way that I don't really expect people to get into from, you know, outside the audiophile hobby. And, you know, they were genuinely excited about the listening experience that they were getting and even were even more excited about the price point at which they could actually attain this. I mean, you saw a reaction to the Cadenza's price, which was consistently their favorite headphone. Okay, so while there's obviously no scientific takeaways from this video, I do feel as though this is a sign that the audio hobby is growing, you know, with the kind of performance that you get at such accessible price points, you know, you're getting listening experiences that are much better than what a lot of the you know usual consumer rate stuff that you see uh, is able to offer and while even like my friends were able to notice that and really appreciate it one more thing i wanted to note before i go is that you know we often talk about how rapidly the im market is growing and improving and well i feel as though this video is a bit of a testament to that since you know the cadenza performed so well so i just wanted to say that if you're interested in learning more about budget iems i highly encourage you to check out this article that my colleague fc construct wrote over on headphones.com in which he compares a lot of the highly regarded, you know, bang for buck I am. So that includes things like, you know, the Cadenza or the 7 Hertz Solnode Zero. So again, if you want to check that out, there'll be a link in the description down below. Anyways, that is all for me today. I hope you enjoyed this video or found it useful. If you did, do consider dropping a like. 
If you'd like to learn more about headphones, IEMs, or anything audio, I highly encourage you to check out the audio file section on headphones.com, which is our blog post. If you want to chat with me or any of our other reviewers, do join our Discord, which will be linked down below. And until next time, this is Chrono signing off.